What is going on YouTube? So coming back today with my FSU football preview for 2016. So we're talking about a team that went 10-3 and in 2015, struggled pretty mightily on offense for a lot of the year. Really was not a great year by Florida State standards, at least over the last decade or decade and a half. So they are stacked with talent this year on both sides of the ball. Big expectations, college football playoff expectations by a lot of people. So let's go ahead and start with my first key player and the biggest name on Florida State, which is Dalvin Cook. Again, not going to talk too much about Dalvin Cook right now, but again, he is the best player on this FSU roster, one of the best running backs in the country. Some people might feel he's the best, but I don't I don't think he's quite at that level of Christian McCaffrey and Leonard Fournette. I think he's that next level down. I think he is a top five running back in the country, though, for sure. He will be the heart and soul of this team on offense, in my opinion, again in 2016. There's no way that's going to be taken away from him. Uh, and I think he will have a little bit more support from Jock Patrick in the backfield, maybe start looking forward to uh, who their next, uh, who their next uh, tailback is going to be after Dalvin Cook. So move things over to the defensive side of the ball, and my first key player on defense, Josh Sweat. Sweet, whatever. So he is expected to be the best player along this defensive line or linebacker, um, whatever position you consider him at. So coming back for his sophomore year, expectations are really through the roof for this kid. Um, I think this obviously could be a breakout year for him. Um, like I said, he is the best pass rusher, at least in my opinion, that Florida State has. He's going to have to be a lead-by-example sort of guy. And I mentioned this earlier with my Louisville video. I think they're going to need a one leader or one guy at every position or at every level on the defense to lead pretty much every position on defense. I think Derwin James can handle the defensive backs, Josh Sweat for the linebackers or defensive line. And then, you know, Roderick Hoskins or Jacob Pugh, I think both guys are capable of leading the linebackers. Underrated set of linebackers at that, too. So my third key player is Sean McGuire, the presumed starter for Florida State. DeAndre Francois might challenge for um, a couple snaps, but I think it's going to be Sean McGuire at starting quarterback. He's going to have to have a bigger year than he had in 2015. Not necessarily bad. He is a very smart quarterback, limits turnovers for the most part. But he's going to have to, I wouldn't say take more risks, but he's just going to have to pick, put up bigger stats. I mean, I know that's all uh, you always want to do that, but this is a must for this year. You got a lot of talent, again, at the skill positions. Um, Travis Rudolph, Kermit Whitfield, most notably at the wide receiver spot. Travis Rudolph, one of the better wide receivers in the country. We'll see what we can expect out of the tight end spot. Ryan Izzo, I think he's a new tight end that they're breaking in this year, so we'll see how that goes. So moving to the first of my two X factors, and for me it's the FSU defensive line. I think a defensive line that can be very good, I mentioned earlier, Josh Sweat and Jacob Pugh, two guys that I think can uh, really seal the edges for uh, Florida State, Derek, Derek Nottie, Nady, however you say that, That's gonna he's going to have to be big as a, um, as a defensive anchor up the middle. Uh, Demarcus Christmas and Demarcus Walker, I think, will be big for or big this year. Also, Demarcus Walker presumed to be an NFL draft pick after this season. So, my second key factor is consistent play at the quarterback spot. I mentioned this earlier with Sean McGuire. He he's gonna have to put up consistently, probably two three hundred yards a game with two or three touchdowns if Florida State wants to compete at the level that a lot of people think they can compete at. I think Sean McGuire has the ability to do it. He's shown it in the past, but again, kind of an off and on sort of thing. Smart quarterback. I mean, continue limiting the mistakes and the turnovers. That's a big thing. But, you know, start taking a little bit more risk. I mean, be smart about it still, but, you know, put up. I, I, I don't know if you can say Jameis Winston type numbers, but I don't know. Maybe go back to Christian Ponder, EJ Manuel. They've had a lot of good quarterbacks. You, you got to step up to that level if you want to be a quarterback at FSU now. So, my trap game for FSU is NC State. It seems like people say that every year, um, but it's pretty obvious. You look up and down their schedule. Um, at USF could definitely qualify, but I think they'll take care of that. I don't see Florida State losing to a non-Power 5 team. Um, I say that, and then you had Houston last year. But anyway, I don't see them losing to USF. 
Um, North Carolina and Miami could be another two. But like I said, it just seems like NC State, it comes after the Clemson game. It's right before two kind of easier games for Florida State against Boston College and Syracuse. So, and it's in Raleigh. They lost there in 2012, kind of derailed their season. But again, it's something that seems like it comes along every year. So, my biggest game for FSU is pretty obvious, and it's Clemson. They have a lot of big games on tap for this year. It's a tough schedule. They got Ole Miss, Florida, both out of conference. Um, and then they got Louisville, North Carolina, Miami, and Clemson in conference. So And USF out of conference. That's no easy game either. But, again, they lost by, oh, what was it, 10 last year? I'd have to find that number. But the game is is at home this year. It should be a little bit easier for uh, FSU to be able to come out on top. Uh, what was it, 10 points? Yeah, 23-13. And, again, that comes back to that whole quarterback play thing. And, you know, a lot of people expect Florida State to be able to knock off Clemson this year. I think Florida State does have the more talented defense than Clemson this year. You know, Clemson had that lockdown defense last year, but they lost a lot of those players. <laughs> You know, it, it, if Florida State wants to take this division, I think it can be theirs. They are one of the most talented teams in the ACC. They are the most talented team alongside or alongside Clemson. So get into my record prediction for Florida State, and I think they're going to go twelve and one, which is kind of it hurt. It might hurt for Florida State fans a little bit. I mentioned this if you see my college football playoff predictions or my ACC preview and predictions, then I still feel the same. I still think they're going to lose to Clemson. And I still think they're going to clear, clear through the rest of their schedule. I don't think you're going to see two teams in the college football playoff. Granted, if they beat both Ole Miss and Florida and one of those two teams wins the SEC, then I don't know. You, you might have a discussion on your hands then. That'd be really crazy to see two teams from the same division make the college football playoff. But again, though, one of those things that you talk about when it happens, uh, you never know. I do think a bowl win... One loss season is on tap, though, at least a New Year's Six Bowl. A very good one at that. So that pretty much does it for my FSU preview. Uh, I did my Louisville preview earlier today. If you've not checked that out, go check that out. Um, but I believe, let me see what I am coming back with either today or tomorrow. I have Arkansas and Iowa on tap. So uh, moving out of the ACC for a little bit. That's pretty much it. See ya.